How long have you been out here, holy man? Since the last full moon, maybe a little longer. Last Days in the Desert is really, it's a family drama. It's not so much about this holy man as much as it is about his interaction with this family. How people are joined at the hip to their loved ones, whether it's, you know, children to their parents, parents to their children. Everything matters more to him than you. My father loves me. When I was thinking about it and prepping it and definitely scouting, I knew that, that the movie had to be an immersive experience. I think the desert's incredibly important. It is a, a second character. The desert is ruthless. It strips you of your vanities. We rely on the backgrounds, on the winds, on sand blowing so much. When you're in the desert, your ear is much more uh, in tune with with specific sounds and things that seem like silence and the distance to sound. Are you one of those preachers looking for something here in the desert that you can't find anywhere else? So Justin and I have really kind of taken that on as our primary approach to sound design is just to record everything we possibly can. It works pretty well to go to the location where the film's being shot and we were able to work with the production unit to go and actually record while they were filming. I put my hand down directly on a cactus, which was very painful, and then in reacting to that, I sat on a cactus, which was also painful, and then in reacting to that, I kicked a cactus. That may have been a mistake. Zach was maybe about 100 yards away from me with a recording rig. I have never seen so many snake holes in my life. And he just turned his mic around because the rocks tumbling sounded really good. And he was like, be quiet, the rocks sound great. The sound designers, you know, would sometimes use sounds that had, you know, a ring to them that could have been score. And the composers use percussion instruments that could have been sound design. So there's a few instances where it blurs. Do you think anyone will care? Man of a thousand years from now. Atmos can do so much for your film, but it's not this technically daunting thing. It's not overwhelming. It's really just a tool like anything else we use. Atmos has, has really allowed us to elevate our work. When we started working in the format, we realized very quickly that it created a sense of reality that we did not expect. It also creates a really good example of the type of movie that can be done in Atmos. Uh, that isn't like an epic um, crashing space vehicle type movie. Using the format to, to serve the story as much as you can is obviously our primary goal. You can do really subtle and nuanced work that will translate better to more theaters. The incredible specificity that you can place to your sound, being able to sort of put your audience in a bubble if you want to use the ceiling speakers or even use them to a certain extent. If you close your eyes, I mean, it's like you're sitting in the desert. I found myself looking at the screen and feeling as though I was looking out through a window. I've seen Jerusalem. I've walked away without my father knowing, and I've seen it from a ridge. The way it surrounds you, the way sounds, the way you're able to move sounds across the, the theater is incredible. It gives the audience a, a, a higher access to the story. Atmos is a huge uh, push towards a higher fidelity future that you know, we will no doubt see uh, shortly. There are others. No, there is only me. There is only me. <laughs>